are here at the infamous Iowa World Food and Music Festival. It is super Once cool. in a year. Super cool. So there are about 60 food vendors around the block. Uh, it's a lot bigger than I expected it to be. There were a lot of food. And there were not that many people because it's the middle of a Friday afternoon. The weather was super nice. And one fun thing about this festival too is they have dollar sampler sizes for I think every single booth there. That being said, I would not recommend it. No, we quickly stopped doing that. For we, the most part, it was like... They were a lot less fresh and they were a lot less warm and they were usually a lot less good. But the main dishes that we had, the real dishes we had were really good though. Some we, place. We had our highs and we had our lows. Mm. First place we went to is Harem's Grill. We got their dollar taste item. There was a kefta kebab and there was a chicken kebab. So we got both. I like the chicken better. I like the kefta one a lot. Thank Super beefy flavor. You can taste the onions, all the spices. It was good, but I don't know why. I just like the chicken better. And we're definitely gonna go back there in about 20 minutes and get uh, some gyros. The pitas they had in the grill looked delicious. And yeah. now I trust the meat. Yeah, and we actually walked past another Greek place. I was gonna say. They had those... packaged pitas, like, like store-bought pitas. Yeah, but they also had those fries that were covered in tzatziki and hero meat. No, no, that's a separate place. That was a separate place? Yeah. Karam's Grill, good. We're probably gonna go back to try their gyros. That other place, you're on the list. We went to the Filipino store, which I think is actually a grocery store here in town. But, is it? But they have Filipino food inside the grocery store. And what they were serving here though was shumai. Not something I initially- That was their taste item. Their yeah. dollar taste item. If I hear shumai, I'm not thinking Filipino food. I'm thinking dim sum. It tasted like frozen shumai. Frozen shumai is not that bad. That being said, I went back and got their grilled pork along with their stir fry noodles. I think they said pancit. And then I got their sweet egg roll, which yeah. was egg roll wrapped over banana and jackfruit. To me, it tasted like the apple filling of a pop tart. I didn't even try it because I don't like jackfruit. I like the crispy sugar on the side, on the, on the outside. Though. The noodles were a bit underwhelming in flavor. It just tasted like salty, but their skewer, oh my Lord. Yeah, I think I thought it was really good. I really like the flavor on it. We're probably gonna go back to the Filipino store too to try the halo halo. Oh, we're definitely gonna go back to get the halo halo. Mm. So we stopped at Greek Flame Foods, which is where you were talking about that had the gyro fries that we mm. might get later too. Probably not. Well, they were freshly fried to order though. And out of respect, people were waiting for them. So we got the $1 sampler for the falafel ball. That, you liked, I liked it. But you also threw half of it away. Because I didn't want to waste all my calories. And if it was that good, you wouldn't care. When it's truly great food, that's what you're spending the calories on. Then you don't care. When there's 60 food vendors, I care. Greek flame foods. It was okay. The place we both liked, though, is Hawaiian Grill. Yep, we got their teriyaki chicken taster and that was bomb. That was definitely the best of all the tasting menus we had. I think so. Super juicy. There's like little slivers of chicken. There's little slivers of chicken skin. It was really good. I wanted to try their Spam Musubi, but then- I um, got excited for you. Kind of looked a bit pale. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't really grilled first before it was wrapped into the Musubi, so I didn't get it. And then we tried Heart and Soul. I was a little hesitant because it was uh, it was only white people in the booth. Oh. But the flavors were Korean. You could taste the gochujang. You could taste the brown sugar. You could taste before a little you, bit of sesame oil. Before you get into there. When I ordered the spicy pork rice bowl and she opened the thing and like was picking up the pork, it was like pulled pork. <laughs> I have never seen Korean spicy pork as pulled pork. That was a concern. That's why I was gonna say the flavors were Korean. They were distinctly Korean flavors. Yeah. Pulled pork was very confusing and it didn't help at all. It should definitely have been grilled pork belly. It was an interesting choice. I mean, pork belly, sure. Or even just like pieces of pork. Basically anything that's not shredded pork. That's yeah. weird. I love the kimchi. The kimchi was good and nice and refreshing. It's nice and cold, crisp, spicy, funky. Yeah, so it was definitely the relief that I was looking for. We went to Kathmandu, a place I was looking for. I believe they have Nepalese food, which I made in a separate video. Uh, they made Momo, which I tried making, and I was worried when I made it because uh, it was like a chicken dumpling. And when I made it, it... I remember yes. liking his Momo. And I thought it was just a little chalky and bland. 
Uh, I'm glad to see that theirs at least matched up to that because it was definitely chalky and bland. I don't think it was bland. I think it was just too much cumin. Cumin is all I tasted. So there was, this place is kind of a mixture of restaurants with a little booth and then uh, food trucks, like local food trucks. So one of the food trucks we went to is Nina's Tacos, which we were very interested in because they had a lot of birria items. And, you know, that's the trendy, mm -hmm. fun new thing. Yeah, it's the new hot thing these days. And especially delicious when we got it in San Diego. So we got the birria ramen and we got the... Quesarita taco. Some birria beef, some cheese, and then it was in a crispy corn tortilla, I believe. It was not crispy. It was not crispy. It was it, barely flavored. It tasted like nothing at all. It was very mildly flavored. It was cold. And then saddest of all was definitely that little pre-packaged... Uh, Ramen, if you want to even call that now. It's Tapatia brand ramen, which I don't want to exist. First of all, how are you going to charge $7 for a cup of ramen? They did load it with beef. It just tasted like chili. Chili. Yeah. I tasted onions and cumin. We are definitely spoiled for having gone to San Diego for birria tacos the very That's first not time. That's being spoiled. Like you said on our way back, you can't just put beef in things and call it birria. I think they were definitely uh, capitalizing on that newfound popularity there. They were probably the most... Well, no. No, they're I not. I thought they were the most disappointing and the most food we've thrown away. That's true. The most we spent. That's also food. the most we spent, yeah. Uh, we went to Papillion because in one of my Eric Eats the World cooking shows, I made Sarma. Every single person comments to say I made Sarma wrong. Aww. I know. So I tried it to compare. It tastes exactly like mine because it's just cabbage leaves wrapped around like a light meatball in a tomato sauce. It tasted bland and boring and this one tasted bland and boring. So I feel like 100% I knocked it out of the park. Yeah, it tastes just like the one he made. And it looked just like the one I made. That being said, we are also in Iowa. People in Iowa at least make Sarma as well as I make Sarma. <laughs> that brings us to... Rico's Pub. Which when I saw online, a Vietnamese restaurant called Rico's Pub serving mostly American pub food. He was very skeptical. Very skeptical indeed. I loved it. But what they were offering here in their stall was predominantly Vietnamese food. Don't get their taster item because the chicken on a stick, yeah, it's not It definitely good. tasted like a little chicken nugget. I got their walking moi, shrimp, peanuts, pickled carrots and radish, fried shrimp cracker, fried shallots, and some fish sauce drizzled on top and some pork belly. And it was really, 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 really good and refreshing. My favorite thing there was the tricolor dessert of the tapioca, which we recently had on our Vietnamese food tour in Houston, but uh, I think this was just as good. Mm. Creamy mung bean on the inside. Uh, a little jello -y, not mung bean on the outside. So good. Yeah, definitely went there just expecting to try their taster item. And then when I saw it, I was like, damn, that looks good. I'm mm -hmm. gonna get it. I was very, very mm. impressed. impressed. Okay, Ta Taqueria Tres Hermanos. Terrible. Uh, we were waiting in line for her taster taco, uh, and I saw him pull out this like boiled skinless chicken breast and just like chop it up and throw it in. And I thought, nah, I'm gonna keep on walking. Like it's not, not even salted. It was literally boiled shredded chicken with not even salt. Like the most basic thing, like just season your food. She spat it right back out. Yeah, because it was horrible. Legitimately not even wanting to bother chewing or wasting a single calorie on shiznit. This is a kid show. I do not recommend. I'm they needed cuatro hermanos. I tried wings on wheels. I didn't try it just because it looked like a regular chicken wing. I thought it was pretty good. And it was a regular chicken wing, but I liked it. I just, I feel like I've had enough chicken wings that I don't need to stop and get one just to try it. Well, it's a dollar for a chicken wing and that's... They were more generous than most people. Yeah, they gave me two, but they also didn't come to the window for a really long time, so... Mm. And the truck was super high and I didn't appreciate that, but... Not... Yanni's Grill is the place that we walked past that had the pre-packaged pitas. 
got eyes on you, Yanis. We walked past it multiple times. Yeah. So that's trip one into the Iowa World Food and Music Festival. And now that we've come back for some reason, we are going to go straight back in. Mm. Until we feel ill. Uh, we did also get to catch one of the culinary classes they had. This one was teaching how to make scones, mm -hmm. which I feel like we know how to make scones, but we did stick around because they were handing out samples afterwards. Pretty good. They were pretty good scones. Yeah, we'll catch you guys in a second. Mm. See ya. We are back from our second trip. First stop we made when we returned is Boba Tea 168. Yeah, because we were very thirsty. And you got the mango, fresh mango smoothie. Mm -hmm. She kept telling him, you sure this is fresh mango? I asked, I was like, is this actually mango? Because you know some people put mango smoothies and it's just powder. Mm -hmm. I wanted the actual fruit. She gave a hesitant, yes. Uh, and then I ordered a cane juice, which- They uh, were out of. They were out of. But that's okay because the mango smoothie, I think my favorite thing of the entire festival. It was she his. She disagrees. <laughs> they made the mango smoothie. I saw him put uh, frozen mangoes in it, which fine, whatever. Some juice, and then I think he put some more syrup in it. I think he was taking water out of that cooler. Pretty sure I saw syrup because there's no way it would have been that sweet otherwise, and some type of juice. There was definitely a sugar syrup in there, but I think it was just water. And I think that's what kind of turned me off because I was. I was actually expecting like just mangoes. It was good, but it was a little too sweet. It was amazing. Objectively speaking, it was probably really good. It was just a little too sweet for my taste. I think I wandered around for like 10 minutes saying, this is the best thing I've had in this state. He, he finished it so fast. I've never seen anyone drink a smoothie that fast. And yet it was gone too quickly. Uh, we also went back to the Filipino store one more time. Mm -hmm. The lady was excited to see us. I mean, I love their pork skewers. It was so good. This time we got a halo halo and one more barbecue pork kebab. Skewer. Halo halo was delicious though. And everyone kept staring at it and commenting that they had no idea what it was, but it was beautiful. Yeah, because they were right. It was a lot of colors and it's all the jellies and everything was really good. The ube ice cream was really good. Ube ice cream, a lot of uh, jello -y bits, coconut milk, ice, all amazing. Mm-hmm, very good. I would definitely say the Filipino store is like... Filipino store knocked it out of the park each time. Yeah. Good job, Tim. But we also went to Thelma's for Thelma's. the cookie ice cream sandwich. Oh, yeah, yeah, Got the tasting sandwich, and it was okay. It was definitely frozen. It was very frozen. It hurt my teeth, but it was not bad. The cookies were pretty good. You can't just make a cookie and then freeze it and then hope it turns out okay. There's, I mean... For like a regular ice cream sandwich, it's not cookies. Like otherwise, they're gonna be like this. They're gonna be frozen hard and just like brittle. Yeah. You can't just make a straight cookie, put ice cream in it, and call it an ice cream sandwich. It just doesn't work that way. It was fine. If you wanted something quick, easy, it was fine. It was not fun. It wasn't very good. Then you went to Gigi's Chicken and Waffles. Yeah. So I wanted to try a bite of their chicken and waffle, which was their tasting menu. Eh. The waffle tasted very fried in old oil. Like it didn't taste good. By the time we came back, it was what? Like three, 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. on a Friday. Mm -hmm. It was not busy at all. Everyone had cleared out, which was great because no one here in this entire state is aware that there's a pandemic or is bothering with masks. So yeah, definitely felt a lot more comfortable this time, but the food was definitely much less fresh. I think they were getting rid of some of like the lunch stock still. Yeah, it was not that great did go back to Hawaiian Grill and got their aloha platter since their chicken teriyaki was so good. Mm -hmm. The aloha platter is just chicken teriyaki on rice. And it was- Looked the same as the sampler you had gotten, but just like much bigger and with a big pile of rice to go with it. Yeah, for $7, very worth. Mm. I yeah, definitely I, say. I feel like that would have been a good just lunch by itself. Yeah, delicious. We went back to Karam's Grill and got their mini mm. lamb gyro. Kebabs were delicious last time. So I went back to try their lamb very good, very delicious. Although I wish we had gotten the lamb gyro. Like the full size? I wanted to eat it with the pita bread. This is a mini one, so the pita was like covered with the salad, so he didn't realize that it was there. <laughs> didn't realize it was there, and then it was like so small you couldn't really pick it up easily. I only really wanted the gyro meat because that's my favorite. Also went back to uh, Takaria Vila. Not back, this was our first time there. This was our first time? Mm-hmm, they redeemed all the other Mexican stands in this fair. Because I would say up to this point, the two worst places we had were Mexican food trucks. Yes, it was by far. This place, I stopped by because when I walked past, I saw 
a whole foil pan of fire roasted jalapenos. And then next to it was roasted onions. And I was like, oh my Lord, this looks so authentic. They had six topping stations in total. So then I went there and we got the pibil taco. Pibil? Got the spicy salsa, put the onion, cilantro, jalapeno, blew it out of the park. Oh my mm. gosh. I was like, I took a bite and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. Crazy delicious. Smicy, smoky, mm -hmm. so much flavor in there. They had so much going on. They had a giant glistening red pile of meat with a pineapple on top and they were just shaving it off for us. It was good. It was so good that we went back. Again. Right away. <laughs> Uh, and we got the carne asada. A little less good, but still good. Still wonderful. Tried to look up where the actual restaurant was, and if it wasn't 44 minutes away, we probably would have gone there for dinner this weekend. They were the only ones, too, not pushing birria. Yeah, that's true. I'm, I appreciate that they're not, like, jumping on that birria craze because it's been disappointing thus far. For one, it's just trendy, and then secondly, no one's doing it well. So I appreciate that they're very authentic. And they have their flavors down. And then we got ice cream from the outside scoop. I thought that was wonderful. It wasn't custard, but it was thick like custard. We got their chocolate peanut butter. And it was very flavorful. I can't say any of the other flavors intrigued me. It was like Danish gate, pina colada, I don't know, weird stuff that I didn't want. Chocolate peanut butter though was good. Super dense and custardy though. I guess we were too scared to try the other flavors. Like what is a Danish treat? Ice cream. I, we could have asked. Ice cream would be a Danish treat. That's true. We also went to a chocolatier Stam's and got their tasting um, gelato bite. Mm. And they had this little cute mini cone that was like so freaking adorable. But then like the ice cream just like, or the gelato. Immediately gelato, melted. Melted all over. But it was really good. Very creamy. And they've got a lot of stores here in town. Uh, we have made a point to go there earlier on the first day. Uh, very packed with, with old ladies not wearing masks, so we kind of bailed. But it, it was a cool chocolatier looking shop, so we might mm. stop by again. Yeah, so they did have a lot of, they had a lot more gelato flavors in the store than they did mm -hmm. in the festival. We also tried Uncle David's mini donuts. Which I was skeptical, but uh, they ended up being okay. They, they yeah. tasted very much to me like, have you ever made homemade donuts? No. From like uh, biscuit dough? Tasted exactly like that. I thought it wasn't bad. I wouldn't like bad. make a point to get some. I would not go out of my way to get it, no. But it was fine. It was better than I expected considering they weren't frying it fresh there from what I could tell. Like they had been sitting around for a while. It was still okay. It was not bad, yeah. So that was it for the Iowa World Food and Music Festival. Should we go back today? It's, it is a three day event. It's still going on for two days. Uh, for the rest of the culinary shows, we're not really sure what happened, but uh, they just didn't happen as scheduled. Like yeah. no one was there. We tried to go see some shows, but you yeah. know, nothing. And then kept waiting for music to play. Uh, but then there was. once it did, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It wasn't bad. It's true. It was not bad. It was fing terrible. It was like discount country in Iowa. He was so visibly unhappy that I got worried. I had to, yeah, I had to leave. If it was decent music, I would have stuck around and had like a drink. I, I can put up with country music. I don't care about that. Awful, awful music though. I know when the guy first got to the stage, some old man was like, that looks like Kid Rock, but worse, like a discount Kid Rock. If we get bored today, we might stop by and see if there's another show because it's free. You can just walk in, you know, mm, right by our hotel. <laughs> what was your favorite place? Filipino store for sure. Filipino store I liked. Uh, Rico's Pub I liked. Taqueria Vila. Taqueria I thought was Vila. wonderful. Oh yeah. Uh, the mango smoothie from Boba Tea 168 I thought was amazing. I like Caram Grill's Mediterranean food. I would have eaten a whole pita of that. If some of these other restaurants out here disappoint us, like I'd go back for that. Yeah. And then the outside scoop. I know they've got a store here in town. Um, they won me over. I want to make sure that they have other flavors I want to try. So we can vote for our favorite vendor. Which one would you vote for? I think we're going with Taqueria Vila. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna go with Filipino store. Not because I'm Filipino. I'm not. <laughs> they just have like lots of good food. Cause I would say, yeah, my second favorite would be that, uh, that lamb kebab we had. Mm. So they hold this once a year every September. So make sure to stop by next time. I would not make a whole weekend out of it though. No, we spent a good, what do you think? Three hours total? Yeah. And we wandered around it like four or five times. Yeah, unless you wanted to watch some of the shows. I mean, you know, if you don't eat like us either, like we ate a lot. Very fun. I liked it. Plus, there's a bunch more stuff here to eat in town. Uh, you can check it out in our other video for our Des Moines food tour. Yeah, keep following us for some more food in different cities. See you next time.
Bye.